Thanks, Jordan. Afternoon, Nathan. Afternoon. Um, sure, you had a good night's sleep last night after that performance. Um, the key really is trying to bottle that kind of performance and take it into the league, isn't it? Well, look, it's about keeping consistency, really, in, in, the, in your performance, whether that's Cup, League or whatever, because the two Cup wins have been against Premier League sides anyway, so it's it's equivalent to Premier League games. I know probably the feel is slightly different, but the you know the, the levels of games have been Premier League games, so it's about just it's just about continuity of performance. That's all we're looking for now. Is it a mental thing? Is it the fact that you went into both those Cup games with the shackles off, if you like, and it freed you up, or... Can you play that way in the league as well? Well, we're going to try to play that way because it's what we've been building for. We we, we did it not to the to the extent that we did a Palace and well, the, the Fulham performance was, was level to the Palace performance really. It's just we didn't you know we, we didn't concede silly goals and and we took chances. Whereas um, uh, against sort of Man City last night, it was a complete performance. So the performance has been building really. So it's it's you know it's not um, something that's just categorically happened in the cup. Press conference last night was that you've taken a lot of this person criticism very personally in in recent weeks. Do you think you need to develop a thicker skin and ignore some of the criticism? Is that gonna? I I have ignored everything really, and I I don't want it to be a big issue because uh, some of it's justified, some of it's not. I I took umbrance to one thing really, not not the general level. If, if people people when you when you in the when you in the public eye, and when you do a job like like managers do. You're going to get criticism regardless of, of of what you do at every level, you know. So, it's something. So there's nothing to do with thick skin or not. I think I've held myself with real dignity in, in in terms of recent weeks and and hopefully now coming through. Is it difficult to block out though some of that? I mean, I don't hear it. I got to be honest. I don't hear it. I I I was informed about one incident. That's it. I I I don't hear it. I don't. Um, I don't read social media. I don't read press much. To, if if I'm honest with you, so I I block everything out. I, f I focus solely have tunnel vision on trying to do a job for Southampton. You've spoken many times about how hard you've had to work to get the position that you're in. You're playing the facing manager at the weekend, who had a stellar playing career, and then within a couple of years found himself managing one of the biggest clubs in the country. They're two very different paths um, into the top flight, aren't they? That you and Frank have had. Yeah, and look, I, I I can only come for myself. I'm proud of my journey. I've had to work hard. I know that, you know. I I, I didn't have the career of, of a playing career that some others, but I, that's not to say that I I, I don't want to test myself at the, the highest level as a manager. I, I I tried to get to the highest level as a player. I, I wasn't good enough, but I worked hard enough to you know to to make sure that I had a 23 year playing career, and now I've I'm establishing a t I mean 10 years into a a coaching and managerial career that, that I'm proud of and wherever that takes me it's God's will and look, all I can do is, is try to affect my own my own journey and I'm proud of that do, Would you ever have looked at the likes of Frank Lampard for example when you were at Luton and thought it's not fair that things come so easily to some people whereas the rest of us have to fight hard to get those positions Everyone would have had to earn it they don't just give it you would have had to show some qualities my first forage into coaching was when I was at Yeovil and I was player assistant manager or someone would have thought well, he's never done a coaching job I, it was because I was in that position and they saw something in me Frank's first job was a wonderful job at, at, at Derby I played against his I, I managed against his Derby side so I never ever look at anyone else's career and that's the thing I took umbrance to I'd focus on my own I never comment about another manager never comment about someone higher lower level than I do. I focus on my own job and I try to keep myself to myself and and, and that's the way you've got to. So Frank's, I'd never comment about Frank Lampard because he's, he's he's a real good guy and and he's had a wonderful career. Just one final one from me. Um, Charlie Alcaraz, is he available this weekend? Is everything, all the paperwork done and everything? It should be. So we're just, just waiting visa things and stuff like that. But um, but yeah, we hopefully, hopefully is. Um, do you think the timing of your arrival in the Premier League as a manager has put more pressure on you in terms of Unai Emery coming back, De Zerbi coming back around a similar time with that European experience? Do you think that's kind of cast a bit more pressure on yourself? No, I think you come in as, as a manager, you have to get results, regardless of, of where you've come from, where you've got to get results, and that's the, the be all and end all. So, wherever you've come from, if you don't get results, you, 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 you get criticism. And, and at the minute, I, you know. Take the Liverpool game out of it. Said one day, I'm I'm at fifty percent win ratio at the minute. You know, I've I've lost to three Premier League games, won all all the cup games, so I've won three, lost three. So I I need to improve the, my my ratio in the Premier League, and if I can do that, then then I, I'm sure the criticism will stop. Last night was obviously great for morale for everyone, but on Saturday there's going to be two sets of fans that are quite unhappy. Um, how are you going to deal with that at Goodison Park? 
you're very negative questions. I mean, to be honest with you, I, I, you know, um, I, let's focus on on the levels of performance that we we are doing. I can't uh, comment on Frank Lampard or comment on Everton Football Club. What I can comment on is is, is Southampton Football Club, and we we have a wonderful club here. Yep, they're a little bit disgruntled, but hopefully we're changing perceptions. Now, given time, we will change perceptions, and that's all it is. So I can't comment on. On Merseyside fans or anyone else, too grand, and I, I'm, I'm not concerned about their fans. I'm only concerned about myself. So, uh, you know, I am positive. I'm, uh, a, bright, I'm a Brighton when, fan. When, and I'm when, a Brighton fan, so oh, okay. I've had several dealings with you before. Um, so, thanks for your contribution to the club there. Uh, but in terms of this, how what's going to happen on Saturday? Then, how are you going to beat Everton? Well, apart from crystal ball, I, I, we're going to prepare a team that's going to go up there to win a football game. To win a football game, um, I've no idea what's going to happen yet. If I did, then you know, I, 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 I'd be, I'd be in a different game. But um, we, we'll be as positive as we possibly can to try and win a football game. We know it's a difficult game away at Everton. Yep, they're in a difficult situation as well. Um, so look, we, we've just got to concentrate on ourselves. That's all I can do. All I can do is prepare Southampton Football Club to try and win a football game. I have tried to do that in the six games I've taken charge of. I've said I've been successful in three of them, not successful in the other three. So hopefully I can start getting above the 50% line. Thank you. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you very much. Um, Nathan, um, I know you can't comment on Everton and stuff, but I'm looking ahead to the game thinking it's maybe good you're away from home because the pressure on Everton in front of their home fans at that sort of church of Goodison Park is enormous at the moment and I can't help thinking how important the first 20 minutes is for you your guys to start quick and put pressure on them well again look I, I can't comment on on Goodison Park or anything all I'll do is prepare a team to, to to go out and try and win a game for Southampton Football Club we will stick to our game plan we we will try to do everything we can to win that game everything we do, do tactically will remain in-house but but I, I think we're evolving tactically, I really do. And, uh, um, and, and as I said, I'm looking forward to the game. It's a psychologically an important game. It's psychological as to get right as much as the physical side of it or the tactical side of it. I mean, that's sort of both teams near the bottom scenario. There's, 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 you know, it's four-pronged when you, when you go into games like this. And you have to be right physically. You have to be right mentally, tactically and physically. You have to be right. Um, and, you know, we've, we've had a game. They've had the luxury of not, not having a game this week. But... That probably could be a, a a real mental uplift for us, which which you know could defy the physical outlay which we did last night. But we'll look, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. And at five o'clock on Saturday, we'll 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 have we'll have a clearer picture. How much difference uh, has a week made the fruition to see the the fruits of your labour come to fruition in two matches to go into this weekend? Because there's intangibles, aren't there, like confidence and belief the players have, and it to be a big lift, doesn't it? I, I, look, absolutely, it is a big lift, but. The, you know, momentum can only be built in time. Um, structure and 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 real uh, sort of spirit and everything we want can can only be built in time. It, it is no magic dust. There's no sprinkling there that, that suddenly everything's right overnight. It doesn't happen. But I, I just hope people see that that, that that there is structure, there is fruition, there is better performances, and and week in week out we are we are improving. And then we've got 20 games. So the important thing is not where we are now. It's important thing is where we are on 28th, 29th of May. That's the big thing. And I'm sure because at pretty much everywhere I've been as a player, coach, manager, there has been an improvement in players, teams that that I've been in charge of. So look, all, all, all I can say is if, if I'm given if I'm given time and, and given the benefit of the doubt, I'm I'm, I'm insanely confident that we will we will be better. Just finally from me, Romeo Lavia. I'm slightly worried about seeing him go off last night. How is he? It's pre preempted. Sixty minutes was what he did. If we won him, you know, we could have played him for ninety. Then we could have lost him for the weekend. But but with doing that and and using the squad and and being really sort of fluid and tactically aware that we were able to do that and 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 bring him off after giving him sixty minutes, we were able to give um, Miroslav Osic a, a, a little run up, which would have done him. You know the world is good. I'm able to look after a few players as well. So, so look, it was a good night all around there because we were able to use the squad and, and come through a, a really really tough game. Good news, thank you. Okay, we'll move on to the section for the 10:30 season. Start with you, James. Hi, Nathan. Hi. Uh, you mentioned about being fluid tactically. Uh, did last night's win show that your team can swap between systems in game? Well, suddenly changing from being inept in a five to to now being fluid, and that's football. But. Look, we, we we train we tactically we train you know really hard on 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 certain systems on on working things, you know in and out of possession and we know that the Premier League 
put you know, so many dilemmas and so many um, solutions you have to come up with. And, and last night was probably up against probably the most innovative coach of, of all time. So we knew we had to be really, you know, really fluid last night tactically. And we, we, we've shown that we can be that. We've shown in other games we can be that, by the way. Um, uh, and, and, and I'm pleased with that because, and that, and that will evolve. We'll get better at doing that as well. Your best when perhaps your back's up against the wall, and that encourages that aggressive style of football as well. No, I, my I, my style is aggressive anyway. If you only watch teams I've had before, I'm usually high press, really aggressive, want to score goals. My track record at every club I've been at pretty much is scoring goals, and aggressive press, and and, and I want to get that right. You know, I've, I've got it right twice when I was at my previous club. Was was trying to get it right at one, but even when I was at Brighton, I I was in charge for two games and was aggressive and and and. And, and took four points out of two games. So at every place I've been, I've tried to be positive and aggressive. I've never sat back in and, and been a negative manager. So um, that's that's not nothing to do because my or the team's backs against the wall. That's that's how that's why I was brought in to do, you know really. And just on Lavia and Diallo, they seem to dovetail quite nicely in that midfield pivot. They played that same system with Wolves number ten against Chelsea in August, and they've not really had the chance to play that midfield balance. Do you feel that's perhaps a best way to go in midfield now? Well, it, it's a way of going in midfield, and and we have the, the important thing is we have real balance in the side that we can be tactic, you know, tactically good. Whether we go one and a two, two and a one, or whatever that is, we have players that can do that. And um, the thinking was that they, you know, one of the last times they won here was against Chelsea, and that was the midfield three um, with Lavia scoring. So um, it, it was, you know, a little bit of preemption in that as well to be able to look at at, at sort of history and think, well, they, they have played well together, and I, and I thought they were excellent. They they really were. You know, World Pro set the press. The other two behind them were aggressive, and and I was really pleased with that side of it. You spoke about how key Rasmus was in your appointment. What's the dynamic been? What's the relationship been like early on in your tenure so far? I've got an excellent relationship with him then. Rasmus is an innovator in terms of stuff, and I've been brought in for a certain, certain style and certain, you know, to do things in a certain way, and we believed it was a logical fit. Maybe not the most popular, maybe not the, the most high profile, but a logical fit. And and I'm I'm hoping I can repay him and and Sport Republic because because they were the ones that have gone out on a calculated limb, if you like. And just finally, uh, Moyes got six months left on his contract. Has there been any update, perhaps a new deal? Oh, we'll deal with that internally. Moyes has been excellent for me and, um, you know, I hope he's at the football club for a lot longer. Mark? Hi, Nathan. Um, any injury news, any updates? I know Armel and Stu have been missing, but obviously Theo, Juan Larry, outside of McCarthy. Um, Alex and Theo, uh, Theo are, are much closer, so we've got a big decision to make with, with those. Um, Armel is, is a time scale, it'll be another ten, well, seven to ten days and we won't rush him because of, of the of just the trickiness, not the gravity of it, but the trickiness of the injury and then you know, there's, there's one or two others that are just a little bit further away but we won't rush because you know, the, the ones who are injured are, are, are young ones. And then then Stu's just had a real a problem with his groin that we've, we've got to get to the bottom of and he's been playing through pain so uh, you know, as I said it was it's been the right decision to take him out. One for his his own psyche, and two for 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 the fact that he wasn't contributing what he would have liked to us. And just on Carlos, who got to come out on the pitch with Samaritas tonight, so how much have you been able to speak to him since he signed the contract? Are you have training with him yet? Or? Yeah, we're training with him today, and uh, yeah, I spoke to him. You know, uh, obviously. Um, been pivotal in, in bringing him to the club and 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 so on. They they had a number of offers and we had a big competition. But he wanted to go to a place that one had a track record themselves, two with a manager that had a track record of developing young players and being bold enough to play them. So that's why he chose us, and uh, we're really excited. And uh, as I said, hopefully we can we can get him involved on the weekend. It's a long way from home for such a young guy, but does he feel settling in? I know he speaks Spanish as well, so is he able to? Down a well, it's too early. He spent a lot of time in the air, a lot of time on the M3, a lot of time in uh, in a hotel, and then now he gets to come and do what he can. But but football is universal. You know, there's a lot of Spanish speakers here as well that will help him to integrate and help him to be, um, you know, at home pretty quickly. But for a young boy, it's a brave move. I mean, I did it at 20 myself. I went to Spain, obviously not quite as far, as far away as Buenos Aires, but. Um, you know, a, a big bold move to, to do that, but we've got a wonderful support network here that that will will make his transition as smooth as possible, and then we'll make sure we look after him because, as I said, the, the psych the psychology of moving away is 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 the biggest thing really, and if he can handle that, then he'll be fine. Thanks, Nathan.
Thank you, Jordan. Good afternoon, Nathan. Um, Jake had asked you about that midfield pairing, mm. but obviously that meant that James Will Prowse could play slightly further forward. And I think a lot of people said it was one of his best performances this season. For James Will Prowse specifically, is that his best role? Does he enjoy playing there the most when he can get on that final line? I think if I if if I put James Will Prowse in goals, he'd do a job for us. He's he's since I came in, he's been he's been outstanding. Attitude wise, he's been everything you'd expect from a seasoned, wonderful England international. And a, a Southampton legend, you know. And to be fair, when I've looked at games past when he's played with Ori in, in, in midfield and been aggressive and things, I, I know I can play him in any of those because he initiates stuff, he can back stuff up. But whatever I asked him to do, he's, he's, he's wonderful to work with. And, and that's been a real a real plus for him to me because obviously, with the greatest respect, a lot of people would question well, how do you handle big players? As long as your work's good, big players respond. And he's been, he's a big player and he's responded. Is it fair to say that he enjoys having those those two sixes behind him, Indiolo and Lavius, who can sweep up behind him and uh, give him that freedom? I, I think if you give him set, some set to do, he'll, he'll, he'll endeavour to do it. And as as long as you have structure and you have purpose in, in terms of stuff, he does that. And he's been excellent, you know, the return, the goals return, the assists return, the, the outputs that he's put in week in, week out. He's been quite phenomenal for a Premier League player. He really has. And obviously, Mark asked you about Charlie Alcaraz. Um, how quickly can you see him sort of fitting into the team? Is it something that's going to take a, a little while to get up to speed? I hope not. I, I hope we, we can get him get him in, in, involved pretty quickly. But as I said, we, we'll have to gauge that. As you said, there's a lot of factors to do that. He's he's been used to playing games and uh, and things. In fact, in a tough tough league, um, so we, we think he's relatively up to speed. Premier League's a different world, as has been commented much, you know, uh, 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 quite a lot. But I, I, I'm sure he'll get up to speed and we'll will choose his his integration very very carefully so that it's it's not at a detriment when we put him in. Yeah, but I mean, I you've had more important things to think about over the last sort of six weeks. But I wanted to ask about the the tactical alignment between your team and the, and the B team because it's something for the last few years. It's been that they play the same way. They play, they still play that four triple two when I went to watch them on Friday. Have you had conversations with the you know the twenty ones coaches and and how that alignment will work? Absolutely, but it it's not the alignment isn't systems. Alignment's philosophy and 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 principles. So, if they play aggressive press, go after the after the game, play in a certain way, a fluent way, can at certain times stretch play, but you know are, are really disciplined in everything they do and come from that aggressive style of play. Then that's all we're concerned about. It doesn't matter about systems because, with the greatest respect, said it last night. Systems don't win games. Players do. And, and if you if you go after the games in whatever system you play and you are structured and know what you're doing in those systems, it doesn't make a difference what you play. You've always had a lot of the young players in your group, and you and Jay Morgan, and you've had uh, Ryan Finnegan and Ollie Wright have travelled with you a lot. Um, what have they offered to your group you know, in the warm-ups and helping out, and what are you offering them? Well, I don't think they're, they're helping out. I think they're, they're there on merit. You know, we, don't, we don't promote people because they help out. Like, we, we don't, at the minute, we've, we've picked up a couple of injuries, which means to, to fill a 20-man squad, we have to have people in there that, that we believe in. And I, I've, I've been really impressed with Ryan Finnegan. He's a long way to go, but I think if, if he applies himself well, he can have a real, real good career. Jimmy Jay's a young boy, but you know we've seen him and Don Ballard. We've got some wonderful, wonderful young strikers at the club. So it's, it's been a real touch and go between them two. We've gone with with, with, with Jimmy on, on, on a couple of occasions. And, and I said, when they come up to training, they, it's not about they don't let us down. It's about, well, they have to lift that. They have to show that energy, that zest. That, and they do it. And look, this club has had a wonderful track record of producing young players. And we want to, be, we want to continue that. Yet yeah, we've bought some and brought them in, high, high-end ones. But we want to develop our own as well. Thank you, Alex. James Ward Prowse has just suggested to me that maybe Southampton historically have been a bit too nice, a bit too easy to play against, and a nice day out for for away teams. He says you've brought a bit of nastiness. Do you go along with that? Have you tried to make them a little bit, a little bit nastier? I, I want to be aggressive. Whether that's nasty, whether whatever that is, I want to be aggressive. I, I haven't come here to. To, to be a bit part, I you know I I know I've got a lot of criticism that that, that doesn't affect me in terms of how I do stuff. I w I want to go after you know I want to go after this opportunity, and that means my team will have to do that as well. And I demand from them they respond, and I think it'd be, it'd be wrong of me of commenting to be a bit nice and and stuff because I remember watching Ralph's teams and they were you know, aggressive and and things. And that's what one of the big reasons why I I decided to take the job. You know because it's a, it, it, there's a lot of things already here that I could use uh, and that was that was one thing so you have to judge whether they're they're nasty at times the crowd can be nasty I found that out in my, my, my myself but um, but it's about creating an aggressive environment where you know we're, we're we're respected first and then feared after that 
And have you used that sort of crowd reaction and maybe some of the negative headlines t to create a bit of a siege mentality in the dressing room as well? Not really. I've demanded from from them in terms of look, you know, only crowds respond to performances. That's a, that's the thing, and I'm very respectful of that, you know, in terms of. And I've asked for a little bit of time, but I, I do understand frustrations. But they saw the crowd were excellent last night. They were wonderful last night, but they responded to a wonderful, wonderful performance against arguably the best team in the world. And, and that made me proud, but it made me proud of my football club last night, not just the players and everything, because it shows that if we can get it right, then we have something special here. Taking Mara off the mark, it's been a, a while for him. Do, do you think that can really spark him into life now and he can go on a bit of a goal-scoring spree? I, I hope so, because he's he's a great kid. And I said kid in the greatest respect. He is. He's still learning his trade, but he works so hard. You've seen it. He, he had a big part to play in the winner at, at Palace when he went, closed down centre-off. Centre-off couldn't play forward, had to turn out, played back to the keeper, then we robbed it. All part and parcel of an aggressive press. And, and I've been really pleased with it, really you know, impressed with him. And, and for the others as well, you know, Ibra, Musa, um, Seku, Joe Rebo on the weekend. Hadn't featured week in, week out, but we're creating this squad mentality now where they know that they're going to have to be ready to come in and play and influence and and, and, and be on the front foot. And, and that's what I'm proud of, really. And I'm proud of Seku because the boy's got talent. He can finish, you know, and he's just about tidying the edges because he's still young. I know you're on the lookout for a new number nine in this window, but it's up to the, the current forwards, isn't it, to improve their goal ratio as well. That's been a big problem this season. I didn't say we were looking for number nine. I said we were looking for a, a, a more attacking potency, really whether that's a number nine, whether that's a wider one, whatever that is, what we want to do is add aggression, pace, power and and, 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 and quality. So whether that's number nine, 10, 11 or 55 of the numbers these days, it, it's, it's that's what we're looking to add. But nonetheless, the strikers that are already here clearly need to up their you know, potency in front of goal. Yeah, and, and again, it, look, pretty much every striker I've worked with has scored goals. Again, respectful of the levels, but... In the low levels, my, my team were the highest scorers, apart from apart from Barcelona and Man City. We, we, uh, you know, again, level, respectful, um, and every striker I've worked with has scored goals because of the aggressive style we play. And I'm sure Shea, Seku, Armour, the wide men will you know will score more. This first goal that uh, Musa scored in 22 months, I, I I think. So Seku's got his got got off the mark, so it, it bodes well. Uh, Armour hasn't scored in a little while and, and it's good for him to get back on the sheet and, and Shea's been contributing. Now we have to find other ways of scoring so it's not just Prowsey and Seco and Shea and, and things. We, we have to add that so that we become a more potent force over the 90-minute period and, and that's what we're intending to do. Thank you. Nathan, does it feel like this week going into Everton, <clears throat> given how big the game is for the, for the two clubs, you've spoken about changing perception, mood, after a week of two wins, new signings as well, this week is a real chance to sort of harness a bit of good feeling and momentum. Look, ab absolutely, and, and I'm not hiding behind it and thinking, you know, we're re reinventing the wheel. It wins produce confidence and then momentum can, can gather, but it's important you keep going. And it speaks to me a tough week because we had a tricky, tricky game against Palace and thinking, what do you do with Man City coming up then with Everton? Had to juggle the squad. So we won the first game. Then you're thinking, well, you're not really going to build momentum because you're playing you know, the world's best team. But we've managed to do that. So now we've got to finish the week off. And three wins in at any level, whether that's non-league, League Two, one, Championship, Premier League, three wins in a week, you've got to be a good side. So if we can do that, then we'll go some way in saying, OK, we've we've turned a corner. And you spoke a bit about how you felt maybe a little bit of nastiness in the crowd in recent weeks. Do you want to be able to harness that with the good performances and maybe turn that on opponents instead of a bit of infighting? Look, I, I understand the frustration. Let's not... Can we not dwell on this anymore? Because there's a lot of negativity around the thing. They've made their feelings not, and I understood it, and I do understand it. Right. Do I think it's harsh? Maybe. But I understand it, considering I'm only three games into a Premier League career. Okay, I understand the scepticism, I understand everything. But all I'm saying is give me time and then if at the end of the season I'm, I've still only, I haven't won a Premier League game, then I know exactly what's going to happen. But that won't happen. That won't happen. So all, all, all I'm saying is let's forget the negativity now. We've, we've turned some sort of corner. I think I've, I've bought a little bit of respect for the way I work. So now all I can do is try to hammer more home. And if I do that, then we can create something special here. We can create an environment, a culture that 
produces players, it's aggressive, and it gives them a team that they can be proud of. And I'm sure that's all Southampton fans want because they've had that in the past under some great managers with, yes, a con- considerably better name and, and, and bigger track record than me. But it don't matter. As long as Southampton win, it don't matter. And that's all I'm trying to create. This week feels like a chance to draw a line in the sand and move forward together. Absolutely. And a, 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 a real positive result on the weekend and performance will go a long way to that because we've got some big challenges coming up. And we are going to need everyone because... There's no point our fans being against us in, in, in anything because that doesn't create anything. But we show that we can we can produce performances. We show that we can. And as I said, the ironic thing is, yeah, if, if, they, if it had been the other way around, we lost all three cup games and won three Premier League games, then, you know, I'd, I'd been up, up and around in a poker stick. You know what I mean? But the fact is the other way around and then the priority is the Premier League. That's the thing we have to turn around. But in terms of building momentum, in terms of building an environment, a culture, a way of playing, we are getting there. And you just find you've had a busy week in terms of signings. Do you feel like you're close to anything else or is that going to be later in the window? Oh, look, that, that'll stay in-house. And what we've got to do, the, the, the thing is, it's not just about getting anyone in. We have to get people in that we believe is going to improve us considerably. And we have to come out. And the, the thing about the alignment with, with how I've always recruited, I always did at my pre- previous club, and with what the owners want to do here, is we have to come out of every window stronger. Every single window from now on, we have to be stronger in terms of taking Southampton forward. No backward steps, no looking back, no taking just bit part players that are not going to think, or just fillers. We don't do that anymore. We've got, got enough players. All we want to do now is keep adding quality, keep adding pace, keep adding aggression, keep adding players that are going to make us this potent force. And, and that's a, 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 a constant task.